All right, back in the basement again today for a raw review or impressions video. I wouldn't call this a review. It's gonna be the impressions video of this. This is the Instar power lifting belt, which I have had for a couple of weeks, but I haven't used a ton. Now I get offered a lot of free stuff all the time, but a lot of the free things that I offered are things that either I have no interest in or are copies of other real versions of things that are either out there or that I already own. So oftentimes I turn these companies down and I almost did that with this belt at first because when they approached me and sent me a picture of what they wanted to send, which was this power lifting belt, I thought to myself, hey, that looks like a knockoff SBD belt and guess what? I already have a knockoff SBD belt. Now this particular version that I have which is an Alibaba special, has a black buckle, so it might not look tremendously the same, but black leather, red suede inside. I'll show you a picture of the real SBD belt so you can see. And in fact, my buddy Bryce Lewis also got approached by this company and he posted something on Instagram saying this is a SBD knockoff. And I thought the same thing at first until I looked a little bit more into it and realized that this is not a prong belt or an adjustable prong like the SBD belt, adjustable lever. This is instead a ratcheting belt. So it's a little bit different. I did not own one of these previously. And I thought, hey, that at least might be something interesting to talk about as they're now approved in some federations, depending on where you compete in powerlifting. So again, the selling point of this is it is a ratcheting belt. How it works is very similar to any other belt. It is supposed to be tight on your waist. So this is a 13 millimeter one. It simply has a guide rail on the lever side. I will put that on top of the bottom layer. And then just like any ratcheting system, especially if you've owned a truck, you're probably really familiar with this. You take your strap, you stick it in, you push it through, and then you ratchet. In some cases, you go for a big full ratchet, really get your body in there. In other cases, you just want a little ratchet, a little bit, a little tight, real tight. So the selling point here is it's ratcheting, which means you don't have to worry about half inch holes, one inch hole spacing, uh, prong spacing that you run out of holes on. Technically, if you can get this around your waist, you should be able to adjust it to the perfect fit every time. Whether you like it really tight, really loose, you have that option and you're not limited to holes, which is probably a lot of people wish they had in real life. So typically what you would do is you'd put the belt on initially. So right now it's a little bit loose. I would sit around, play on Instagram, drink my pre-workout, talk to people if there was anyone else in my gym, and then when I was ready to go do my set, walk up to the bar, tighten it to the point of where I needed to be. This is fairly tight. Do my set, 5,000 pounds curls, and then when I'm done, there's a small release button on the bottom of this levering ratchet that makes the belt loose again. Now, the ratchet system here is its main selling point, and to me, it's also its main deterrent, meaning that although it works well in practice, once you already have the belt on, putting it on and getting it to the point where you wanna use it is a little bit cumbersome. And also an issue I've run into when using it is taking it off. So right now, it's loose, but if I push the button underneath it, I'm trying to separate the belt, it's not going up. There it goes. So it takes for me a little bit of time to come off Occasionally, not every time. Sometimes it works smooth as butter, which if it did every time would be a much more appealing. But to me, it's not always super smooth. And then an issue I also run into sometimes is getting the actual strap out when I'm done. The way that the strap is shown, or sewn I should say, and I will show you some B-roll of it, is it has basically a catch so it won't typically come out very easily. Obviously probably a built-in safety feature, but in order to get out of this, I have to get my finger in there and adjust it and pull it out, which sometimes takes a little bit longer than normal. If the hole within the ratchet where the strap goes through is not lined up really well, it can take more time and can take some adjusting. So even though once it's on, the adjustability is really easy and simple, getting it on and off is not as simple. So typically how I would use this in my training, so I'd come down again for the day, I'd line that strap up, I have to get the hole lined up correctly. I'm gonna get my strap, I'm gonna put it through, and I'm doing this in real time so you guys can see exactly the time commitment you would be doing. Obviously you can pull the strap a little bit taut in order to save yourself some of the ratcheting, and then depending on where you are in your corner of the gym, just ratcheting, just ratcheting, we're there. 
nice and tight. And again, go and do my sets. In between sets, push the button and I leave it loose. So that way I don't have to take it on and off, which takes a lot of time. And then that way, when I'm ready to do my next set, couple ratchets again, and you're good to go. So again, the ratchet to me is its main selling point, but also one of its main deterrents. Another deterrent for me, which I've already mentioned, is the fact that to me, this looks very similar to an SBD belt. So I think a lot of people initially taking a look at it would say, hey, that's a knockoff SBD belt, which isn't necessarily bad because people buy knockoff SBD belts. Case in point, this thing cost me $80 delivered to my door through Alibaba. No, I will not send you the link because I do believe in buying stuff from the manufacturers, but I bought this to do my belt latching video that if you haven't seen, check it out. Maybe I'll throw it in a card. That's 80 bucks, right? The SBD belt normally costs 280. This belt, which can look similar to an SBD belt upon first glance, cost $200. So the price point is fairly high, comparatively speaking. And although they are completely different belts, I think a lot of people with the untrained eye will say, hey, that's an SBD knockoff, but it's almost as expensive as an SBD belt. Why don't I just buy the SBD belt? So I'd really love if they would kind of change the look of this a little bit. Now, obviously they're probably going to need this big ratcheting lever on front for their system. But again, the color and just how it looks compared to a full on normal SBD style belt is very similar. So maybe if they change the color or look slightly, that would help. Also with the black leather with the red suede interior, looks very similar. So again, I get, I think, why they did it, because maybe they want to look a little bit like the SBD belt, or maybe they just like the red and black color theme. But I think, again, for many people, it'll be a deterrent from buying it, as in the case with Bryce Lewis and myself initially seeing this, thinking again that it is an SBD style belt, which it is not ratcheting style belt. So again, to me though, however, getting this off is not as easy. So again, this is a little bit of an annoying feature to me. So you live by the ratchet, you die by the ratchet, if you will. I still like and prefer an adjustable lever belt because although maybe the adjustability isn't as accurate, getting down to a half inch of adjustability like I have on the PAL or even the one inch adjustability on the SBD knockoff or a clone or even just a normal lever belt where I tend to wear the same tightness for all my lifts. That's more convenient because it's literally easy on, easy off. And the adjustability to me, and this is a nice feature, but it's still a point where it wouldn't make me switch because of some of the other things with it. Now, speaking about this belt in general, I've mentioned already the black leather outside, the red suede inside. It actually feels and looks really premium. Again, similar to what the SBD does, which is a $280 belt. This is a $200 belt. It does not feel cheap by any means, whereas my SBD knockoff definitely does. Now, this is said to be made with Italian leather. And one of the things I noticed about this is when I were to bend it the opposite way of which it's supposed to go, number one, it is a very pliable belt for being 13 millimeters. I would say this is probably similar feeling to what some of the Mark Bell strong belts feel like where you don't have to break them in necessarily. So if you want a thicker belt that you don't have to break in, this kind of leather may be more appealing to you. But when I do this, the black leather inside does not ripple up pretty much whatsoever, which is interesting because all my other leather outside belts that I've had always do. And again, I'll show you some B-roll examples of that. Now the interior itself is a red suede. It feels really soft and smooth. This is called a micro fiber suede, I believe. Not a leather guy, but it does feel really, really nice. And one of the things about this belt, which is also similar to the SBD, as they say, the first couple of times you wear this, wear a dark colored shirt because the red suede can and will stain your shirts. Now, I don't lift heavy enough or don't sweat much here in the temperature controlled basement to ever run into that issue. So I haven't had any bleeding. It also probably helps that I'm wearing a red shirt in this instance, but they do call that out specifically on their site. So I'm fairly certain that it will happen if you go with this belt and sweat a lot or actually lift weights and don't just sit in your basement making YouTube videos. Some other nice features on this, I mentioned the actual lever and the ratchet itself. Feels really high quality. I thought that this looked pretty big and it does look pretty big out of context. But when I take a look at, let's say the Pioneer adjustable lever belt, for example, or even my SBD knockoff, it actually doesn't take up that much more space, if any more space at all. In fact, it might be a little bit more compact because it's only on one side uh, and there's nothing else on this end besides the strap itself. 
The actual hardware that attaches to this belt is pretty nice in the fact that it's actually kind of engraved with Instar with some stars on it in between. So again, the construction and feel of this belt is really nice, but what it comes down to is you and thinking if you want to spend $200 on a belt, which in my opinion is fairly expensive, for a ratcheting system. Now, a lot of powerlifting federations will allow ratcheting systems in their rule book. Obviously, if you're competing, I would check with the rule book of the federation you compete in, but this could be doable. But to me, just getting it on and off is too much of a hassle where I'm not going to make the switch from my normal adjustable lever belt, which I've come to really love. But I do appreciate Instar sending this. My buddy Brad Arbic also did a video on this. If you wanna see that, he's a lot stronger than me. He seems to like this belt as well, I believe. Uh, but for me, it's more just gimmicky but it could be something that interests you. So I will leave a link to the Amazon page where you can buy it if you're interested. It'll probably be an associate's link, which means I will get some of that chump change if you decide to buy it through this link. Don't know if this video helped you make that decision or not, but in the meantime, as always, thanks for watching and stay big.